Hello, morning, afternoon, evening, whatever it is with you, wherever you are. Uh, my name's James, welcome to my Detailing the Owner channel. Um, this is a separate channel to another channel I have, which is for my detailing business. Um, that channel is focused on the cars that we detail as a business. And I've really started this second channel to help detailers. So the other part of the business I do is I am an accredited Rupes trainer, one of two in the UK. Um, I have been machine polishing cars for 11 years now. Um, I do a lot of training and what, you know, there's a lot of things that come up in the training and a lot of tips and hints that we give out that are things that are not really applicable to the main channel, to different audience. So I've started this channel to really put that stuff up on. So I'm just here at the moment um, with Jeff in the corner. Hello, Jeff in the corner. Uh, I'm just here with uh, Jeff, polishing away on cars like we are on our own. And something's occurred to me, which is a common thing that I see happen very often on training courses with people. So I thought I would just grab the polisher, we've got a car, I'll just pick you up, fire on like, like I do is my sort of style. Um, not massively rehearsed, but I'll just fire on because it's a really important point that I think a lot of people can get some value from. So I hope you do. If you do, like it, share it, subscribe it, that sort of stuff, that would be great. Really consider subscribing and tagging your mates and stuff because there'll be lots more machine polishing tips, detailing tips, detailing business tips, that all sort of stuff coming out, um, which I really think and hope you'll find useful. So if you've got any questions, always put them down in the comments and stuff and let me know. So the main one today is considering what I call landmarks. So one of the really common things that we see happening a lot of the time is on a bonnet, like this A35 that we're preparing at the moment. Um, you know, depending on the amount of correction we want to do, we might split a bonnet like this into four, you know, to these lines, these contour lines on the bonnet, um, and without that front panel. So this main section of the bonnet, I think we'd probably typically split into, well, anywhere between four, six, or eight panels, depending on how much correction we wanted to do in our own personal style. For a light, um, you know, this is a brand new car essentially, for a light polish like this, really I would probably split these into fours or sixes. Um, but what we see a lot of the time is what I call sort of creep with people. So, for example, if we use the Mercedes badge there as our halfway line, and I was splitting here, what I often see people do is when they do their first pass, so obviously with the Rupes recommended system, we're talking about a pass being one set of left and right, one set of up and downs, that 45 seconds to one minute cycle time. The, what we see a lot is people doing their first pass there, so just in line with that middle landmark, if you like. Then what happens when they come to do their up and downs, they'll go over. So there should always be a bit of an overlap with DA polishing, especially on a 15 like this. Obviously the outer 15 millimeters of the pad aren't doing anything because that's the sort of blurry area where the throw doesn't cover everything. So the, there is a, a need to do a little bit of an overlap. What I see people do is do a big overlap. So the first time we come to there, then the second time we come to there, if we're doing some of the more advanced techniques like SWA and that sort of stuff, then we do a double overlap again. And all of a sudden we're, you know, made our area much bigger. And what that means is, obviously the bigger the area you get, it's one of our variables we talk about, the bigger the area, the less the amount of correction you get. So it's actually easier to just focus on the same size area and do more areas, and it's also faster and more, um, it, it's, you get better economy that way, um, than stretching the area all the time. So what I recommend is, is a thing called landmarking, or just making up um, areas. So on this bonnet, the badge is a great landmark. Um, we've also got this body line, which is a great landmark, and I would always treat this panel here separately to the main centre section. You can roughly gauge probably halfway up, but if you can't, or if you're fairly new to machine polishing, the other thing you can do is just put you know, a tiny little section of tape to split it up into two or three. So just 
Um, a really quick tip there, so what I would call landmarks, so just use areas for, so I'll just demonstrate. Not the group eight stuff, so we're preparing this for Guillaume coating, so we're using Guillaume polish. So the first time when I come across, so it's gonna get noisy because I'll switch the machine on. So I've come about halfway up the bonnet there. The, the other landmark you can use is just use your own buffer trails to make sure that you, when you then do your ups and downs, you only come to the same edge of your buffer trails. You don't, if you overlap by half a pad every time, all of a sudden your quarters of the bonnet becomes much, much bigger areas. And it just means you then take more time, you lose efficiency, you're not getting the same level of correction. So that was it really. I just want to fill this channel with lots of these sorts of things. Um, little, little hints and tips just to get you thinking about what you're doing when you pull the trigger on with the machine polisher um, and just have a, a little think about, always thinking about how we can increase that efficiency, how we can spend our customers' money, which is time, more effectively, give them a shinier car for the same amount of money, um, and everybody's happy. So, hope you enjoyed this sort of, one of the first videos. Um, I'm gonna try and spit these out quite regularly, actually, as and when we get stuff, but please, like I say, ask some questions if there's something you want me to cover. I think the big subject we always come across is hourly rates, what do you charge, what things cost. I have no problem with people knowing what I charge or how I price my services. So if that's something that people are keen on, let me know in the comments. Um, other than that, click a like, click a subscribe. If you can consider subscribing, that would be amazing. Lots and lots more stuff like this coming. So, ta-da from me, ta-da from Jeff in the corner over there. And we'll see you all again soon, guys. Thank you.